May God bless and keep you and strengthen you today as we come together for a time of fellowship. Let us begin with prayer. Lord, we thank you for the fellowship that gathers around your word that in what can be very tumultuous times, yet times where we're seeking and celebrating peace, Lord, we thank you for your word that guides us. And we ask, Lord, your strength right now in this time and where we're at and what we're going through, that you will guide our direction, that you will take us to the, the right place in mind and spirit to do your will, to show your love. And so, Lord, we pray today also for those who are bringing love into our lives, the people that have surrounded us with so much care and compassion, that are looking after things that we don't have to worry about, and, Lord, that are a part of the things that we care about, that are making the job a little easier, giving it purpose, strength, and support. Lord, we're thankful for people in our lives, and especially today, Lord, we pray for our families. A lot of our families are going through difficult times. Uh, everybody seems to be having a different struggle, and, and it surrounds us, and it can overwhelm us at times. But Lord, help us, especially in these difficult times, to, to together turn to you for strength and for guidance, to rely on the, on the lessons of faith and the way it calls us to grow in wisdom and understanding, to gain from these experience, experiences, and, and to engage in all they call us to be. Lord, we're thankful also for those that you have blessed with very special gifts and abilities to, to work in, in, in leadership and communities, to work in uh, leadership of, of industries and all that keeps uh, us sustained in our, in our food supplies, in our housing, in, in the resources we use every day that so often we take for granted. Lord, we're thankful for both trades, people, and leaders. And Lord, we ask today for those who would uh, be, Lord, taking a rest after a, after a harvest season. Lord, we pray especially too for children that they will in this Christmas season and this winter season find opportunities for joy and celebration and fun. Lord, this, all of it, we pray in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Today, I've got a bit of a, a long reading and so we're turning to the, to the book of Daniel. We're turning to Daniel chapter 9 uh, at verse 26. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured out upon the desolate. Well, that sounds like a happy message for Christmas. It's one of the earliest mentions specifically of the Messiah, though there's allusions to it throughout the Old Testament. The coming of the Messiah is deeply recognized by the book of Daniel and what that's supposed to mean, the change it's supposed to, to engage in. And so as we celebrate the Christmas message and all that takes place in the coming of Christ and the signs and the stars and, and, and the recognition of those signs and the stars would have very much come from the school that followed Daniel in the East. Uh, the, the recognition of, of the Messiah by shepherds, by angels, by the words of many prophets being recognized by leaders uh, and counselors in the king's court. There's all kinds of things that point to the Messiah. But one of the key things and what is recognized by Daniel is get ready for change and not change over, over just uh, years and years. This isn't the gradual change. This isn't change in a generation. Two weeks, a couple of weeks. A month, within the course of a, of a cycle of the moon, things are going to radically change. How long does it take for change to happen in your life? I mean, things happen over the years, but when it comes time for those big changes in life, how long does it take to, to make a change in the direction of your life? And that is what it really means to accept the Messiah, is be ready for change. <clears throat> you may just be called to continue on the course you're going, but with more meaning and purpose. And, and that in itself will, will change the way you take that course. But maybe you'll be called in a whole new direction, to a whole new place, to uh, a, a change in, in the way you relate to your family. And I pray it will be a more wholesome relationship with your family and your friends will, will learn to respect you more as you respect yourself more. 
whatever it means to accept the Messiah into your life. I pray that the joy of, of knowing Christ in your life is your real joy this Christmas as you seek to follow the path of love that he laid down for us. God bless and keep you. Amen.